in today's video, we're talking about sugar. What's up YouTube? Welcome to the video. My name is Tyler, also known as The Fit Chemist, and I help people take control of their lives by taking control of their fitness and nutrition habits so that ultimately we can lead healthier and happier lives. So if you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe. Turn those notification bells on so you don't miss when I post new videos. And if you are returning, welcome back. I'm so glad that you are here. In the past couple months, I've had a couple of debates with my mother about whether or not sugar actually makes you fat. And I was doing some research and I just saw how pervasive this myth really is. I saw one video on YouTube by Dr. Jason Fung that said, you don't need to control calories, you need to control insulin. Like, dude, what are you talking about? That video is over a million views. Like, that's insane to me. So in today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about sugar, we're going to talk about insulin, we're going to talk about the insulin model for obesity and how that compares to CICO or calories in versus calories out. And we're going to get to the bottom of the question, is sugar making you fat? Stick around and find out. Before we get into all this, it would be useful to know what sugar is. So sugar or sucrose is a disaccharide. It is made up of two monosaccharides, so glucose and fructose. There are a bunch of other disaccharides and then there are also polysaccharides, which are a bunch of monosaccharides that come together and then form the polysaccharide itself. But simply put, all these monosaccharides are just simple building blocks for one of the three macronutrients, and that is carbohydrates. What is the role of sugar in weight gain or weight loss? Well, when we're consuming these carbohydrates, you know, they go into our stomach and then they pass through into our intestines, and that's where we start to break everything down through this digestion process. So we're gonna be taking those polysaccharides and disaccharides and breaking them up into the monosaccharides. So remember, glucose is an example of a monosaccharide. When that happens, glucose will then get transported into your bloodstream and then it will get delivered to wherever it needs to in the body so that you can have that as an energy source. If your body breaks down some of these disaccharides or polysaccharides into monosaccharides that are not glucose, so let's say fructose for an example, your body does have mechanisms of converting fructose to glucose and other monosaccharides into glucose, but I want to make it very clear, not every single carbohydrate that you eat will get converted to glucose. Depending on your energy demands, there are two things that can happen to glucose. So one of them is that if you need energy, you can enter a process called glycolysis, which is taking glucose, breaking it down into pyruvic acid and generating ATP while going through that process. And if you remember, ATP is the energy currency that all of your cells use. So you're producing energy that way. The second option is that it gets converted to glycogen, which is essentially just a polymer of a bunch of glucose molecules, or it can actually get converted into fatty acids, and then that can get stored as adipose tissue, otherwise known as fat. Those energy storage mechanisms, so turning it to glucose or fat, that is going to happen when your energy intake is higher than your energy demand, something like a calorie surplus. We've talked about sugar, and now we can talk about insulin and what role that has in weight gain and weight loss. Insulin is a hormone that is responsible for regulating your blood glucose levels. So once you consume carbohydrates, the glucose enters your bloodstream, you'll have an insulin spike. And essentially what that's doing is telling your cells, hey, there's a bunch of glucose in my blood. I need to get that into the cells so that they can have energy. So essentially insulin is just a blood glucose regulator. If you have too much glucose floating around your system, insulin is gonna tell your body, hey, I need to store this, I need to get it into the cells. And if you have too much and that gets shuttled into the cells, well, that's how you have a net positive energy energy storage, and that's when it starts to get turned into fat. It's also true that insulin does inhibit lipolysis or the breakdown of fat. So you might be thinking, well, if insulin prevents the breakdown of fat, and if I eat too many carbs, it's going to shuttle that into my cells and store it as fat, then if I eat sugar, that must be making me fat, right? Wrong. Let's find out why. Now that we know a little bit about sugar and insulin and how all that stuff works, we can talk about the insulin model of obesity versus CICO, which is calories in versus calories out. Proponents of the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity state that the only thing that's important for weight loss or weight gain is going to be carbohydrate intake. Their reasoning is that carbohydrate intake is going to spike your insulin and your insulin response is ultimately what's responsible for controlling your fat, just like we saw in the title of that video by Dr. Jason Fung. There is a gaping hole in this 
argument though, because if that were true, you would expect that low carbohydrate diets would perform exceptionally well compared to high carbohydrate diets. And unfortunately, if we take a look at the literature, that's just not true. The first study I wanna look at is a meta-analysis that was done by Kevin Hall and coworkers. And what they found was that a low carbohydrate, high fat diet did not produce significantly greater fat loss than a high carbohydrate, low fat diet when calories and protein were equated. That is big news because that essentially refutes what we just talked about, right? If you have a higher carbohydrate diet, in theory, that should make you fatter if carbs are causing the insulin response and that's what's responsible for fat loss. There are several other studies that support this notion as well. So we can take a look at some papers that show that the ketogenic diet, which again is a low carbohydrate diet, is not superior for fat loss. Starting with the first one, another Kevin Hall and coworker papers. So this one was titled, Energy Expenditure and Body Composition Changes After an Isocaloric Ketogenic Diet in Overweight and Obese Men. The next one is Efficacy of Ketogenic Diet on Body Composition During Resistance Training in Trained Men, a Randomized Control Trial. Calorie for calorie, dietary fat restriction results in more body fat loss than carbohydrate restriction in people with obesity. So what is that telling us? That's actually telling us the opposite of what the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity would predict. They say that carbohydrate intake is what's causing you fat, but this paper actually shows that if you reduce your calories from fat, that's gonna cause better fat loss. We'll get back to answering the question, does sugar make you fat in just one second? But if you're getting some value out of this video, go ahead and smash that like button for me. And today's question of the day is, are there foods that are high in sugar that you specifically avoid while dieting? And after watching this video, do you still plan on avoiding that food? Let me know in the comments down below. Let's hop back into it. Now, what everybody's been waiting for, answer to the question, does sugar make you fat? No, let me say that again. No, 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 no button red, no. Let's start with some purely anecdotal evidence before we hop into the signs. So the first thing that I wanna share is my 2019 contest prep story. So after I did that contest prep, I went back and I averaged all of my stats and I actually found that I was eating about 80 grams of sugar per day and I got down to I think 4% body fat by a three point caliper method and my final DEXA scan was around 5% body fat. So I was eating things like Honey Nut Cheerios, I was eating cookie dough because one of my friends would always bring cookie dough over to make cookies. I had insomnia cookies pretty frequently and during my peak week, I was eating things like Reese's Pieces, Chips Ahoy's, Rice Krispies, like all sorts of sugary treats and I still got stage lean. Believe it or not, I am not the only person that has experienced success with fat loss while still consuming high amounts of sugar. So there was someone who did a Twinkie diet. His name was Mark Hobb. He's a professor at Kansas State University. And essentially what he did was he ate two thirds of his calories from convenience store foods or like gas station foods. So he would eat Twinkies, Oreos, Doritos, like those little Swiss cakes that looks like a chocolate cupcake with the white swirl on top. Essentially all of those sugary treats that you can find in a gas station, two thirds of his calories came from from those kind of treats and he lost 27 pounds while doing that. Another one I wanna to point to is So He Fit on Instagram. So she actually did a complete bikini contest prep and she had a Snickers bar every single day and she still got stage lean. So if sugar is what's making you fat, how could all three of us lose a significant amount of weight while still consuming that much sugar each day? Well. Let's see what the science says. The main study I wanna talk about was done in 1997 by Sirwit and colleagues. And essentially what they did is they took 42 women, they equated calories for both groups. Remember that is so important for nutritional studies. And their macro breakdown I think was 11% protein, 19% fat, and then 71% carbohydrate. 20 women were put in a high sucrose group. So 43% of that 71% coming from carbs was straight sucrose. Remember that's what straight sugar is, it's glucose and fructose combined. And then there was a second group of 22 women who were put in a low sucrose diet and only 4% of their carbohydrates came from sucrose. So that's a huge difference, right? 43% versus 4%. And when that came out to daily totals, I think it was 120 grams of sugar per day versus 12 grams of sugar per day. That is a significant difference. Now, what's probably going to shock you is that there was no significant difference in weight loss or body fat percentage reduction. What that's telling us is that those 20 women were consuming over 100 grams more of sugar per day and they were still able to lose fat. There are some other studies that I'm not gonna go through in extreme detail, but I will link them down below and I'll show you guys the papers. The first one being the effects of sucrose on metabolic health, a systematic review of human intervention studies in healthy adults. Controversies about sugars, results from systematic reviews and meta-analysis on obesity, cardiometabolic disease, and diabetes. 
no effect of added sugar consumed at median American intake level on glucose tolerance or insulin resistance, randomized control trial of changes in dietary carbohydrate and fat ratio and simple versus complex carbohydrates on body weight and blood lipids, the Carmen study, the carbohydrate ratio management in European and national diets, and then also relationship between added sugar consumption and chronic disease risk factors, our current understanding. Feel free to check those studies out. If you don't have access to them, let me know. I do have access through my university. I'd be more than happy to email them to you. But hopefully at this point, you understand that sugar is not what's making you fat. Eating too many calories is what's making you fat. The reason that sugar gets a bad rap is because it's often found in hyper palatable foods or over calorically dense foods. So think about something like Oreos, right? You can come home from a long day of work, sit down on the couch, eat an entire sleeve of Oreos in maybe five to 10 minutes. That could easily put you in a thousand calorie surplus and then ultimately that's what's gonna cause you to gain fat. If you come home, try to eat a thousand calories from broccoli. I guarantee you're not gonna be able to do that or something like a piece of fruit, right? So ultimately what I would suggest focusing on is getting 80% of your calories from nutrient dense whole food sources and then leave about 20% of your calories around that you can play with. You know, you can eat other treats like that. You can eat Twinkies, you can eat Oreos, you can eat Doritos. That's not all that you should be eating, but hopefully after watching this video, you understand that sugar does not necessarily make you fat. It's too many calories. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below and be sure to subscribe. Turn those notification bells on because I post new videos every single Friday. You do not want to miss when they go live. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.